All right, I'm gonna let her warm up here. I'm gonna go out and do some hovering autos, uh, what are called hovering autos. I know the correct term for them these days is power loss at a hover, but I'm old, so I still call them hovering autos. Let's we simulate a, an engine loss uh, from a hover. And we're gonna do it first over the grass out here where we're not moving, we're just at a hover, literally a hover and lose the engine and we roll it as uh, we'll roll the throttle down and as we do that we come up a little bit on the collective to cushion the landing we also have to add a little bit of right pedal to compensate for the lack of torque in other words we lose an engine power so the amount of torque delivered to the rotor system is going down that causes the aircraft to yaw left you have to come in with a little bit of right pedal counter that yaw and try to sit the aircraft down without it drifting one way or the other. The other thing that happens when you lose the engine uh, from a hover like that, not only are you losing rotor RPM, <clears throat> but you're losing tail rotor RPM. The tail rotor, the thing, as the, the rotor RPM comes down, the tail rotor and the rotor are basically geared together. The tail rotor spins faster, but they're basically geared together. When you lose the uh, lose the engine, you get a reduction in both rotor RPM. You know, from a hover, you get a reduction in both rotor RPM and tail rotor RPM. So the the tail rotor it's producing thrust and it's pushing air that way, pushing the tail over to the right, so to speak, to keep the aircraft straight. When you roll the throttle down, you lose that. That aircraft will tend to drift to the left a little bit because of the lack of the tail rotor thrust or decreasing the uh, thrust of the tail rotor. So. You have to sort of unconsciously put in a little bit of right stick to control that drift so that you're not sliding left as you touch down and end up not necessarily rolling the aircraft over, but at least scaring the hell out of yourself if it touches down sliding left like that. All right, so we're almost up in the green here. Turn on a little cabin heat today. And then I'll also show you... Uh, a uh, little procedure I like to call the uh, hovering auto with forward speed that I had to figure out uh, out of necessity. I actually lost uh, magnetos a couple times on R44s as I was transitioning out. So I had a little forward airspeed and the aircraft settled back down to the ground. I'll show you what to do in that case there. And we'll probably uh, additionally do a few slope landings. Uh, over here uh, next to the taxiway. It's kind of surprising how small of a slope that a helicopter can actually land on. They only land on about a five degree slope, that's about it. So. All right, we're up in the green. Gonna roll up, get a mag check. Again, I do my mag checks at 90%, so I'm gonna roll up to 90%. There we go. The mag running good. On the right leg looks good. Got it slightly left to get my horn in my right. There it is. Now roll it, split the needle. Nice smooth roll there. It'll reestablish at 70. All right, pre-takeoff checklist. Clear area. Wheels are off. They are definitely off. The area is clear. Towards seatbelts are secure. Warning lights are all off except for the governor. All three gauges are up in the green. We've got plenty of fuel for what we're doing. The radio's tuned and we're on the tower. Check the volume here. Yeah, it sounds good. Don't need the GPS for what we're doing. So we'll come off with our cyclic friction. Come off with our collective friction. We'll roll up to 90%. And turn on my governor. The governor should take it right up to 100%. There we go, looking good. And Cape Tower helicopter uh, 201 Tango Bravo. I'll we'll go ahead and lift off here. Helicopter 201 Tango Bravo, okay. Let it start heating up a little bit. Yeah, one Tango Bravo's on the Cape Copter's ramp. I'd like to uh, go out in the grass just south of the uh, jury hangar there for uh, a little uh, hover work out in the grass. One Tango Bravo, the wind 300 at 15, gusting 22, altimeter 29 or 9 or 3. Use caution apart, uh, operating in a non movement area. Proceed as requested. Yeah, one Tango Bravo, Roger. You know, it's a little bit wet out here, but we'll find us a dry spot. Now. 
And we'll go about right here. This looks pretty good. So, winds out of about 300 degrees. So we'll go ahead and set it down. We'll see how flat this is right here. All right, not too bad. Pretty flat. All right, so we're going to pick it up to about a three or four foot hover. You know, I'm the only one in the aircraft, so that tends to fly just a little bit nose high here. All right, so now, if we were to lose the engine, I'm going to roll the throttle down just a little bit. You're going to see the nose actually kind of yaw to the left. So if I roll throttle down, see that? Get a big old pitch to the, or big old yaw to the left there. So when we do a hovering auto, as we roll the throttle down, again, simulating in engine loss, I have to bring in a little bit of right pedal to counter that, and then as the aircraft settles, you're going to come up nice and smoothly on the collective. You don't want to come up too much because you'll just hang out up here at about three or four feet, lose a bunch of rotor RPM, and then uh, come down and hit hard on the ground. So there's a little bit of technique involved, but we'll, uh, we'll kind, of, kind of count it down here. So three, two, one, I'm going to roll a little bit of right pedal up on the collective, and we're on the ground. All right, nice offset down there. Wait till everything quits moving, all the way down with the collective, roll the throttle back up. There we go. I'll bring in a little bit of left pedal. Go ahead and pick it back up again. I want to pick it up nice and slowly because it's kind of muddy in this field. I don't want to stick a skid and roll it over. So, And we'll sneak back a little bit here. I'll sneak back a little bit more where it's a little drier. Okay, so here we are again. Right into the wind. Now I'll count it down three, two, one. Roll the throttle down the little right pedal up on the skid, or up on the collective rather. And we're on the ground. Once you're on the ground and everything quits moving, down with the collective. Roll the throttle back up. Put in just a little bit of left pedal and we'll pick it back up. Sneak back again a little bit here. A little drier back here. Okay, so I'm, you know, I don't know, three foot off the ground, I guess, something like that. It's a little bit windy today and turbulent, but not too bad. So we're going to count her down three, two, one. I roll my throttle, right pedal up on the collective, and we are on the ground. Well, that's what a hovering auto looks like. Pretty unusual to lose a piston engine uh, completely. Not unusual to have power losses. Pretty unusual for the thing to quit completely. Uh, you know, you can, you can get a complete power loss if somebody puts the wrong fuel in. You know, we got a piston engine here that's running off uh, gasoline and somebody pumps, uh, you know, puts jet fuel in it or whatever, you know. Then you can get it, to, it'll quit all at once. <laughs> But short of that, a lot of times they'll swallow a cylinder, they'll eat a bag, they'll drop a valve, whatever. And, uh, you know, I think we'll uh, actually, uh, you know, get a partial power loss. So these, you know, doing a hovering auto like this where you have a partial power loss, I'm going to scoot back a little more here, looking for a drier area, is uh, not terribly unrealistic, to be very honest with you. Let's snook up here just a little bit. Looks a little drier right here. So again... Now we're at a hover, three, two, one, roll on the throttle, right pedal, up on the collective, we are on the ground. So that's what you do if the engine quits from a hover. Rolling my throttle back up. A little bit of left pedal as I pick it up. Uh, tower 201 Tango Bravo is in the grass here by the jury hangar. I'd like to slide over to uh, Foxtrot Taxiway just to do a couple uh, slide on hovering autos. That's approved. All right, so guess what? Helicopters will fly backwards too, so let me just back this thing up. Mosey on back. We'll do a Texas Mosey on the way back here. Get back to here. Now we're going to slide over to the right. Here to Foxtrot Taxiway. All right. So let's say that we've just picked the aircraft up. Let's sneak on up this way a little bit. Let's say that we've just picked the aircraft up and we're transitioning out to take off. And then we have a power loss. Well, it's just like a hovering auto, so to speak. You want to. The most important thing is to keep the skids level. Do not try to flare. All right. So we're.
sneaking along like this, and uh oh, there went the engine. There we go, up on the collective. Just slide it on, and you use your feet. Again, you have yaw control left to right, and you just wait for the thing to quit sliding. And all the way down on the collective. Alright, I'll pick it back up again. I'll turn a little bit to the left, make sure nobody's behind me. That doesn't look like it. Alright, let me just back up down the, down the old taxiway here again. Alright, so again, let's go ahead and set the aircraft down. We'll kind of simulate what would happen if we lost the engine as we just started our hover. Our hover taxi just started our departure. Alright, so we're on the ground. Pick the aircraft up. And we start moving forward. And there goes the engine. Oh, the engine lost the engine. Coming up, just sliding off. Using your feet to control the yaw. A little bit of left pedal, a little bit of right stick. And just like a full down auto, we're just going to wait for it to quit sliding. And there you go. What you do not want to do, if the engine quits and you're in a hover taxi and the engine quits, do not try to flare. If you try to, it, boy, I'll tell you what, the, uh, the fixed wing guys are, when they start flying helicopters, they're bad about that. Wanting to flare the air, you know, quote unquote, flare the aircraft if it settles in. You don't want to do that because if you touch down on the back of the skids and you get to this thing where you're going front skid, back skid, and rocking, you can actually get the master rocking and end up getting the blades into the tail boom, chopping the tail boom off. So, just like a auto rotation, when you touch down in an auto rotation, you have got to have the skids level. All right. So in a hovering auto rotation, not, again I'm old, I still call them hovering autos. In a hovering auto rotation, when you touch down like that, you still again got to have those skids level. Take a little look behind us here. Nobody back there. Go and sneak her back. Take another look as we slide back. Nobody back there. We'll keep on coming back. Alright, so one more time here. I'll we'll set her down. Simulate an engine loss on takeoff. Where we're only going, you know, I don't know. For display purposes, we're only sliding about 20 miles an hour, 15, whatever. So we'll set the aircraft down. Notice when I sit down, it sits down on the back of the skids first, then comes down. Again, that's because I'm the only one in the aircraft, so things tend to fly quite nose high if you're it, you know. All right, we'll go ahead and pick it back up. And we start moving forward. We're going to transition out of here, and engine goes. We'll roll it down. There you go. Right pedal up on the skids. And we're on the ground. And we just wait for it to quit sliding. All right, once it quits sliding, down with the collective. All the way up with the throttle. Bring in a little left pedal. Governor will take it when it gets to 80, brings it right up to 100%. All right, let's do a few, uh, let's try a few slope landings here. As it's going to back up again, let's look behind us as we're sliding backwards, looking back. And I got nobody behind me. Oh, so sneaking on backwards. So, coming in for a slope landings. All right, so this little, uh, next to the taxiway here, just to the left of the taxiway, pretty darn good slope. Yeah, it looks like somebody's got a Gatorade bottle down there. That's not good. And we'll sneak on up a little farther. So when you come in to do a slope landing, all right, got a rhetorical question for you. When people roll aircraft, roll the helicopters up, uh, roll the helicopter, rather, from dynamic roller over on the slope, do they roll it up the hill or down the hill? Yep, up the hill. Because uh, what they'll do is they'll trap this right skid, 
And then if you make the mistake when that skid is trapped and you come up on the collective, you can roll it. It'll snap right over and that's it. So all right, on a slope landing, you try to get the aircraft right over the spot where you want to land. You got to slowly sneak down with the collective. There you go. I got my right skid is on the ground. Back slowly let the collective down. There we go. So this is about as much slope really as you want to put a helicopter on now. So now, when you pick it back up, I basically have the stick parallel to the to the earth, basically straight up down relative to the earth. As I'm coming up on the collective, that skid starts to lift a little bit. Then we can step away kind of at a 45 degree angle, get away from our our slope. The unforgiven sin is to, when you're sitting here next to a slope like that, is to let that tail come around like that and get over there by the slope. Because you can get your tail right into the slope and hook it. And that is not good. So, Okay, so again, we're coming in our slope landing. We'll just kind of sneak over to the spot where we want to be. Let's say it's about right here. The aircraft in a nice little hover. You tell it's pretty windy today. Winds are kind of gusty and ugly looking out here today. So now, we'll just slowly come down with this, with this collective. That right skid will come in contact right about there. Got the right skid on. Let's say I'm just balancing on that right skid. If I was to come up aggressively or just even a little bit on this on the collective right now it'll snap over to the right i'm gonna come down on my collective and we're on the slope and again this is about as much slope as you want to land on right so now i got my stick up and down relative to the earth straight up and down coming up on my collective you'll see the left skid will start to lift it's coming up and we're sneaking away from the slope all right let's back up again try that one more time Get over your spot. Taking it down nice and slowly. It's going to touch right about now. Slowly down with the collective. We're on the slope. That's it. Now, I'm going to come down a little more with the collective here. Now, what you don't want to do is put an excessive amount of side stick in there. And that's why I say I line the stick up with the earth, all right? Up and down relative to the earth, all right? And as I'm coming in, as I come up on the collective, then that left skid's going to start to lift. There it comes. And I just pick it up, slide this aircraft over to the side. If you put an excessive amount of side stick, excessive amount of right stick into the, into the slope, and that right skid hangs, and you get on, you get aggressive coming up on the collective. You can snap this thing over on its side and destroy the aircraft in about one nanosecond. All right, so we're coming back down. We're gonna get her right here where we want it. Wind's a little shaky today, so yeah. All right, so now we're gonna ease it down on the collective. Got her in a nice hover. Skid's gonna touch right about there. There comes that left skid down, and we're on the ground. All right, now, let's say that, all right, there's straight up and down with the earth, all right? Let's say that I got too much left, left stick in. I'm way the hell over here. Watch what happens when I pick it up. Not a damn thing. All right? So you're only in a, you only really get yourself in trouble if you got too much right side stick. So if you're sitting over on the hill, we will set it back down again here. Bring it to a hover here. We're in about 25, 30 knot winds here today. Okay, so. Doo -doo -doo -doo. That was your hover. There we go. Now we slowly sneak down on the collective. Skid's on the ground. We're down with the other skid. All right, now. <clears throat> so if you get real aggressive, you had a, a whole crap load of right stick in here, and you come up on the collective, like I say, the thing will tend to just snap right over on its side. So if you're going to have too much right stick or too much left stick, you want too much left stick. So right about there is where you ought to start, but I'm going to put in about another three or four degrees of left stick on purpose. Hell, I'm going to go way over here, right? Now, when I come up on the collective, does it get scary? No, it just lifts right off. All right, so again, when people roll aircraft, roll helicopters, rather, up or down the slope, they almost always roll them up the slope because they got too much stick into the, into the, uh, the slope and not enough... Uh, uh, the other way. Okay, going to show you a little little something here if I can 
I'll be back up to where I got a little taller grass. There, there we go. There's the tall grass in front of me. I'm going to come down to about a six inch hover here just to show you. I want, you, I want to show you something here. If you look out in front of me, hell, I'm going to set the aircraft down and just get it light on the skids just to show you something here. If you were to look out in front of us, the grass isn't even moving. We're into about a, uh, oh, I don't know, 25 knot wind, something like that. And the grass out in front of me, my rotor wash is literally going just a foot or two out in front of me, okay? All right, I'm going to pick the aircraft up, and I'm going to stick my tail right into the wind here. And, and then now, take a look how far my rotor wash is going through the grass. We're coming on around. All right, my nose is, or my nose, my tail is right into the wind. I mean, right into the wind. I'm sitting there to hover with about a 30 knot, I don't know, 25 knot wind right off the tail. There. Look how far the grass is run, uh, ruffled out in front of me. My rotor wash is going hundreds of feet out. You can see it way out there. It's probably hard to see with the camera, but it's going way the hell out there. We're going to talk more about uh, why you don't want to make a downwind takeoff at one point, but uh, I'll reference this video in that one. But you can see, when I got a wind off the tail, you know, our, our uh, rotor wash is being blown hundreds and hundreds of feet behind us. However, if we stick our nose right into the into the wind, like right here, our rotor wash is going about five feet out, three or four or five feet out in front of the helicopter. So now when I would, would go to depart, if I just barely let my nose down, there you go, there's translation lift and I'm climbing. So I'm literally already through translation of lift and climbing out, all right? So what would be the big deal? Well, let's flip it around, stick the tail back into the wind again, look out downwind all right now my tail is right into the wind i'm in got my tail stuck into about a 25 20 25 knot wind and so again you can see all of that turbulence that all that rotor wash is being blown downwind all right if we were trying to make it a, uh, a departure through here as we're departing through like this which is something you never really want to do we're going through all of this see how turbulent this is and it, uh, unpredictable because we're going through our own rotor wash not only are we not going very damn fast, we're going through all of this turbulence, all right? So, all right, we'll spin her around, put her back into the wind here. And we're gonna talk at greater length on why you don't want to take a, uh, why you don't want to make a uh, downwind takeoff for about 25 good reasons, so. And Cape Tower 2 on Tango Bravo's on the, on the grass, south of Drury Hangar, like slide sideways and uh, back over to the Cape Copter's ramp. One thing about proceedings request. All right, so we're just going to slide it sideways here. You can fly a helicopter sideways. Back on to the ramp here. I'll bring her back around. Set her down there. Down. Once I get less than 80%, I can come off with my governor. Slide my hand back, friction the collective, friction the cyclic. Take a look at my timer. I'm on the five. I'm going to do a two minute cool down. Again, uh, we'll talk at much greater length on uh, what your preferences are on departure. And just to sum it up quickly, your preferences on departure are to have your nose right into the wind. That is absolutely the best way to go. If we have to accept a crosswind, then you know, a right crosswind is preferable. Our third, uh, you know, third choice would be a left crosswind. And then the last thing we really want to try to never do is to take off with a damn tail into, you know, we don't want to take off with our tail into the wind. Um, Again, there's several different reasons why, but uh, the two easy ones to realize at this point is you need to go through ETL at about 20 knots. We'll say 20 knots. Well, if I'm into a 25 knot wind, and then I have to come forward and I'm going to try to do a downwind takeoff, by the time I actually get enough airspeed that I'm going 20 knots through the air, I'm going about 40 or 45 knots across the ground. And so you eat up a crap load of real estate before you can get this thing above ETL where it wants to climb on out. All right. 
Second thing is we're departing actually through our own rotor wash. That's very, very inefficient. It's also hard to measure. You can measure speed changes and that sort of thing. But you know, climbing out through your own turbulence created by the rotor wash is harder to quantify. But believe me, it's significant. So, all right, we'll come down. Disengage our clutch. 30 more seconds. We're going to pull mixture off with the mags off the alternator. Got about 10 seconds to go. All right. Pulling mixture, waiting for the engine to stop, then off with the mags, then off with the alternator. What you don't want to do when you shut down the helicopter, you don't want to reach up here and just rapidly pull up on the collective off with the mags real quick. Because when you do that, you've actually shut the aircraft down using the mags and not starving it for fuel by pulling the mixture. And what that does, it leaves residual fuel vapors uh, in the exhaust. And if you were to come out and actually start the aircraft within the next few minutes, typically what will happen is it will it'll ignite those vapors that's in the exhaust and it blows your muffler apart. And the mufflers are about three or $4,000 a piece. That's about as much as you can expect to pay for a $200 muffler. But, but you can blow your muffler apart and it gets pretty, pretty pricey to fix it. So... You want to pull the mixture, be sure the engine has stopped, it's not running anymore, and then come off with the mags. On a day like today when the wind's pretty windy, as you uh, as it's slowing down, you want to come slightly to the right with the stick, as you notice I'm coming slightly to the right, flying gyroplanes stop me that. Notice the, the blades are not wanting to flop around and uh, flap down and take out the tail boom. So we're going to let the blades come around. We'll stop them about there since the wind We don't want to line it up perfectly with the uh, tail boom. Put the brakes on.